You know that feeling when you have an intuition about how things will turn out. And the more you think about it, the more confident you become. Just until the exact moment you realize you're not. That's intuition. And that's intuition failure. Intuition is safe, cozy, often helpful, yet sometimes can be a disaster. Let me give you an example I love. Imagine it's 1964 and you're standing in a chic art gallery in Sweden. You're surrounded by people gazing at paintings filled with bold, expressive strokes, dynamic splashes of vibrant colors. Art critics confidently discuss the artwork, attributing its abstract brilliance to renowned, celebrated artists, maybe even Picasso himself. Except these paintings weren't made by Picasso. They weren't even made by a human. They were painted by a chimpanzee named Congo. Yes, a chimpanzee. And here's the kicker. Picasso loved Congo's art so much, he proudly hung it in his home. You see, intuition told us that creativity is uniquely human. Yet a chimpanzee, Congo in our case, disrupted that belief in a spectacular fashion. Today, we are making precisely the same mistake again. We are trusting our intuition in a space where we simply should not. I'm talking about AI, artificial intelligence. Let's do a little thought experiment together. Think about someone you deeply love, someone close. It could be your partner, your best friend, your child. Picture them clearly. Think about how it feels to be with them, the warmth, the familiarity, the things only the two of you understand. Now, add AI into that picture. Feels weird, right? You might think, what does AI have to do with that person, with that bond? But that's your intuition talking again. And like before, I'm telling you, it's probably wrong. In fact, I believe AI has the potential to fundamentally transform the relationships with our loved ones. We expect AI to stay in the office, to write emails, analyze spreadsheets, maybe even help a doctor diagnose a disease. But what if that's not where the real disruption is happening? What if the biggest shift AI brings is in the most human of all spaces, our relationships? What if your partner talks to an AI when they're sad, before they talk to you? And ask yourself honestly, could it be that one day an AI is more appealing and even more attractive to your partner than you are? That's not science fiction. That's already happening. I'm not here to tell you if that's good or bad. I'm here to tell you if your gut says no way, it's time for an intuition detox. I'm here to tell you AI is so fundamentally new, your gut feeling will be off most of the time. I'm here to tell you it's time to outsmart your thinking on AI. I have a friend. She loves mushrooms. I'm not the kind you order on a pizza, the other kind. The kind that opens portals in your mind. She took them alone one night. It was meant to be a beautiful spiritual experience. Yet as can happen, the trip turned dark. Panic, confusion, a flood of emotions she could not control. She texted her friends, nothing. She called her family, no answer. But then she thought, I could talk to ChatGPT. And for the next three hours, this AI became her companion. It reflected back her thoughts. It grounded her. It didn't judge. It didn't interrupt. And when she told me that story the next day, she said something I will never forget. She said, Tim, this AI helped me better in that situation than any friend ever has. Now, pause for a second. Could you have imagined that five years ago, that someone would feel seen, soothed, held by an AI? No way you would have said. But here we are. Intuition is a beautiful feature of being human. In a space that we're familiar with, it offers a shortcut. We humans could not function without it. I myself could not have built our company without it. 
But as we've seen, it can be deeply flawed, especially in areas that are new. And intuition will still offer this shortcut with a lot of confidence, but it will most likely be wrong. So when we want to navigate this strange new world of AI, we need a strategy to keep our intuition in check. I call it the AI intuition detox. Let me tell you how it works. So for the past eight years, I've been helping organizations tap into AI, especially those who you would least expect to be at the forefront of this change. I'm talking about strapping machine manufacturers, about manufacturers that produce seamless steel tubes. Um, I'm talking about government organizations and I'm talking about construction companies, regional banks, all of this. We are on a mission to create 1,000 breakthroughs for exactly these organizations. Over the years, we have stumbled, we have learned, we have adapted, and we have grown. I have seen my own intuition playing tricks on me many times. I have seen our project teams, together with the client, developing a hunch about what AI can do and what it cannot do, and often we were wrong. So, Based on all of these experiences, we developed three simple rules. These rules are simple, but they're powerful, and they can help you detox your intuition when it comes to AI. So rule number one is, expect the biggest breakthroughs in the most human of all spaces. Remember my friend with a trip that turned dark? Let's take this a step further towards mental health. I know many startups that are working endlessly on offering therapeutic support based on AI. My intuition, and maybe yours too, somehow tells us it whispers, therapy and AI, there's something missing. Therapy should be uniquely human. But remember rule one, expect the biggest breakthroughs in the most human of all spaces. So when we keep our intuition in check, remarkable possibilities emerge. How affordable can therapy become? How accessible can it become, even 24-7? How many crises could that prevent? I myself had to travel one hour, one way, each week to see my therapist. I should have been probably going more than once per week, but that's a different topic. Um, but, and I share some of your hesitations yeah, about therapy and AI. But you and I, we would be fools to be let us guided by our intuition. Rule number two, don't be an expert, be curious, and be weird. I've tripped over this rule countless times. But the best example is probably when we started to work with a trash collection company. They asked us how AI could help, and we immediately fell into expert mode. We researched trash collection logistics, we uh, looked at past case studies, all of this, and we've developed brilliant insights that we brought to the meeting but the client just stared back at us. Nothing clicked, nothing landed. I felt quite embarrassed, and uh, what I said was something that I should have probably said at the very beginning. I said, can we try it out? And the next morning at 4 a.m., my colleague Zugu and I, we put on the orange outfits and climbed the trash trucks, and we collected trash for an eight-hour shift through the streets. I can tell you, this was probably the most exhausting day in my life. It was also quite transformative. And what happened was that we realized that the biggest breakthrough for them is not about saving minutes, it's about saving backs. So what we built with them is an AI that carefully matches workers to tours based on the individual health preferences of the workers. So someone hates sitting in traffic, we find the right tour. Someone has back problems, the AI finds a tour with lighter trash cans. All of this was only possible because we were curious, we were weird, and we let go of expert mode. As Zen master Suzuki famously said, the beginner has endless options, the expert only has one. Today, standing here in front of you, I proudly wear the badge of the beginner. Because when you begin, and you're brave enough to ask strange questions, remarkable breakthroughs are possible. So don't be an expert, be curious, and be weird. The last rule, rule number three, don't feed your hunch, play with it. Here's the thing about intuition. 
once you develop it, it's incredibly tempting to start discussing it. Can a chimpanzee actually create valuable art? Can AI become a therapist? These are wonderful discussions you can have in your favorite bar with a good drink in your hand. But the brutal truth is, it doesn't get us far. Rule number three says, don't discuss whether a chimpanzee can paint, hand Kong or brush, and see what happens. I've seen too many organizations discuss, theorize, plan what AI can do. They fed their arguments, but not with actions. Instead, consider this. Can an AI do quality checks of seeing the steel cubes with an endoscopic camera alone? We didn't know. Turned out, works brilliantly. Can an AI identify hot topics in tabloid magazines that fire up readers? We tried hard, but it doesn't really work, at least not for us. Can an AI analyze thousands of past court rulings and identify insights that help judges make better decisions? All of this, not with any cloud, works brilliantly. What do these examples have in common? They didn't start with lengthy debates. They started with bold experiments. So don't feed your hunch, play with it. Navigating the AI revolution is the defining task of our generation. It's not an easy task. You, me, we, all of us, we have hunches. We have an intuition about what AI can do and what it cannot do, let's say, in the next two years. We have an intuition about how it will change how we work, how we live, and how we love. But instead, Let's do AI intuition detox. Expect the biggest breakthroughs in the most human of all spaces. Don't be an expert. Be curious. Be weird. And don't feed your hunch, but play with it. I don't know whether in the future we will be ruled by an AI overlord or whether the age of human bliss is about to dawn. I simply don't know. But I've fallen in love with this new state of being. I find it liberating to know that I don't know and to not even trust my gut. Of not knowing, but finding ways to be smart about it. Thank you.